What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, and it's finally here, so I'm going to tell you what I think about it. It's my review of Arcade 1-Up's Ridge Racer. Okay, so let's start by taking a look at the box that this cabinet is packaged in, in case you happen to find it on the shelf at your local retailers. Uh, really calls out and pays attention to the live feature and all five games included on the cabinet. All right, now it's time for assembly, and something I like to do is add a little bit of wood glue to the wooden dowels and to the threads of every screw that goes into wood specifically, not metal to metal. Uh, this is going to be just a little bit of added insurance to make sure the things stay nice and tight. All right, now that we have the riser completely assembled, let's take a look at it and the pedal assembly. Now, this riser is going to be slightly different than your standard riser because of that notch that creates sort of a relief for the pedals to be tucked into. That pedal assembly is going to attach to the rest of the control panel using a 3.5 millimeter analog cable. This is going to be routed through a notch in the center support and to the rear of the riser to be plugged into the back of the cabinet. Now, as we take a look at the pedal assembly, it is the same design of the OutRun cabinet, but supposedly the springs have been upgraded uh, with increased tension to give you a little bit more feedback. One thing that has not changed, though, is the fact that the gas paddle is not attached at the base. So what happens if you tip forward and push the pedal with your toe, the rear will raise up and hit you in the bottom of the foot, and then when you push your entire foot down, you'll end up getting this annoying clacking sound as you play. Now, it's not the end of the world, but it is something that kind of bothered me. Moving on to the main body assembly, I have another little tip for you. When we're talking about metal screws going into metal threads, I like to use just a little bit of blue Loctite, once again, as a little bit of added insurance to make sure that things stay nice and tight. So next up is the overall construction. You can see that uh, in many ways it's similar to that OutRun cabinet. However, there are a few design choices and options that makes this cabinet a little bit unique. You'll notice that one of the wires coming out of the control panel is white. That is going to plug into your pedal assembly. So in addition to your standard Arcade One of ribbon cable, you have this uh, serial port, which uh, I believe that's a PS2 connector. The control panel now requires 12 volts to support the rumble steering function. This is provided directly from the AC adapter via a splitter. When it comes to the PCB, a Wi-Fi antenna, an Ethernet port, and a micro SD card slot round out the list of changes under the hood. Now the instruction manual that came with my Ridge Racer cabinet didn't even acknowledge the presence of the Ethernet port, so I'm not sure if that's just another way to get internet to this cabinet, which makes sense, and that's probably the most likely explanation, but I think it would be really cool if that was a way to connect cabinets together so that you could play head-to-head. -head. That's not listed as a feature, but who knows, maybe with some future update, it will be possible. Moving away from the back of the monitor, you see the way that the new marquee is attached to the top of the cabinet. I kind of like the way this works out. It's just a simple L shape with the two side curved brackets, really giving this cabinet a lot more height, and it really didn't take too much to get that done. The wire from the marquee is routed through the speaker panel and down towards the back of the cabinet. And for the most part, the artwork on this cabinet looks great, but for $700, I really wish I could have got one of those new molded coin doors. And of course, I wanted to crack open the control panel to get a closer look at that rumble steering mechanism. You can see your stock on off buttons, fairly standard PCB with the exception of that uh, serial port. There's a closer look at the rumble steering, the wires that it takes to power that motor, all your connectors, start buttons, view changes, headphone jack. Most of it's fairly standard, except for obviously that steering mechanism. I'm not sure what the original OutRun steering mechanism looked like. I'm, I would imagine it would be similar, just minus a few wires. And I have one final assembly tip for you. It's these plastic washers I bought on Amazon. The link for them will be in the description below. I use these specifically for the screws that hold down the control panel so that I don't crack my deck protector. If you do that, it's going to break your heart because you're going to look at that the entire time you own the cabinet. So these add just a little bit of added protection and they will sort of curl up or concave towards you when you get your torque just right. So when you tighten it up and these things begin to curl, stop and you'll be good to go. 
You know, I had a spot picked out for this Ridge Racer cabinet. And I thought I was going to have to place this directly on the floor because of the pedals. In my arcade, I have a 4-inch riser for all the cabinets because they're all just a little bit too low for me. But it turns out you've got enough slack with the cable that connects the uh, pedals to the control panel that I was able to place this directly on the floor. So that's awesome. It worked out great because it really places the monitor exactly where I want it. You can see in comparison to the big blue how short it is and also how bright that marquee really is. The image isn't quite as crisp and clean as I would like, but you can see compared to the golden tee, um, it's, it's right there as far as brightness is concerned. Now where the pedals may have been a little disappointing, the steering wheel absolutely is not. This thing feels like it's just thick rubber with a metal core. It feels like an actual steering wheel. It feels really good. You can check out your start button, your view button. Now the view button's only going to be good for three of the five games. Live button, there is that uh, headphone jack. Go over here to the right and you see that stick shift that is actually really springy. It's really tight and it feels very solid. This is not going to be uh, not going to be a flimsy piece because that was definitely something I was concerned about. And once again, the pedals, that's going to be your issue there. If you push down with your toe, that, that piece is going to flop up. It's going to be annoying. So try to lay your foot flat on the pedal to prevent that from happening. And I hope you have a really short, simple internet password because it is frustrating to do that more than once when your input devices are the steering wheel and the pedals. These are your options available at the main menu, one of which is calibrating hardware, which may come in handy. And the individual game settings are going to be fairly limited, especially when you're talking about Ridge Racer and Ridge Racer 2. But once we get into the Ace Driver, Victory Lap, and then finally Rave Racer, you're going to have the ability to change the car type and turn off the steering wheel feedback. Ridge Racer. Okay, so just a few things to sort of wrap up. The rumble steering is just that it's a rumble. It's like a vibration. It doesn't really shake at all. So you're going to feel that whenever you run against the wall, when you hit another car, uh, when there's an impact. But that's only going to happen on the last three games. So Ridge Racer and Ridge Racer 2, you're not going to have that functionality. It's not really annoying. It doesn't do as much as you think. And it is always an option to turn it off per game. So at the end of the day, it's not really a big deal. Is it worth, you know, whatever it is they paid for that feature? I don't know. Time will tell because I really haven't played it more than a couple days. 
And you know, I was concerned with game variety. That's why I was sort of pushing for Dirt Dash to be included on this cabinet. But I gotta say, there's enough of a difference when it comes to the way the cars handle and drive in each game that it actually, it makes for a lot of replay value. In the Ridge Racer games, there's more of an emphasis on drifting, so you're sliding, you're gliding. When it comes to the uh, the Ace Driver games, it's Formula One, so the cars kind of stick to the ground. So it's it's a different. You have to sort of take a different tactic when you're playing, when you're racing. And then Rave Racer, which I thought was going to be just like a carbon copy of Ridge Racer, is not that at all. The car handles dramatically different. The physics are a little bit different. So you have to really get used to that type of driving style gameplay. So yes, at the end of the day, there is enough variety there as far as the way the cars handle to keep you coming back to all the games. And unfortunately, I got to tell you that the audio issues are still there. You're not going to have the bass, which is sort of fine. You expect that, I think, with these cabinets. But I don't think it's quite up to the level that the Gen 3s were. The bass isn't there, the volume is not there. I mean, you gotta have this thing maxed out and it just doesn't get quite as loud as those third gen cabinets do. And uh, some of the clarity, you know, is, is lacking. Also, when you bottom this thing out, when you're all the way to zero, there is a audible hum. Now that's something you're probably not gonna encounter a lot. You're gonna play this thing either wide open or you're gonna plug in your headphones, but it is an issue. And I gotta say, I was really impressed with the quality of the controls. The steering wheel specifically feels awesome, which makes sense that's the thing you're going to grab onto the entire time and even the up and down gear select is also a little more you know industrial than i thought it would be so at the end of the day what do i think is this worth the 700 dollars price tag that they're asking um i gotta say with the games with the variety that's there that i really didn't expect with the quality that you have um yes now if you're looking for a racing cabinet you really only have two options from arcade one up and i think it's going to come down to the software itself take the rumble steering out of the game that's fine the wi-fi leaderboards is fine uh it, it works as advertised but that's just a leaderboard there's really no head-to-head -head gameplay it's going to come down to those games the game selection are you more of a ridge racer guy or an outrun guy but hey those are just my thoughts let me know what you think down in the comments section below thank you for stopping by and checking out the review y'all have a blessed day and i will see you next time